Now that you are going to create your web application using Django, you need to store data somewhere and that somewhere is database and in order to communicate Python or Django with database, we need is models and ORM. So in this video, we are going to cover models.py. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Well, hi, I'm Shubham and subscribe to become a better software developer. So let's start with what are Django models. Well, Django models are Python classes that represent database table. They define the structure of data and relationship between different parts of data. Each attribute in the model corresponds to field in the database table. Every database operation that you do will go through models, even your CRUD operations. That means create, read, update and delete. Unless you become an expert where you can write your own SQL query. Like in database tables, we can create different types of field data type. You can create different types of model attributes that can store different type of data just like how database table works. I will show you how to use them later in the video. By the way, Django comes with built-in user model and other related models. That means it has already built-in user table and other related tables that will help us in authorizing and authenticating any user. I will show you how to use them in one of the upcoming videos. Now without wasting any further ado, let's jump into the code. So I have created an empty folder and we are going to start by installing or creating our virtual environment. So I will say virtual env dot venv and we have our virtual environment created. So let's activate the environment. So dot source sorry source dot venv bin activate our environment is activated. Now let's install Django in that. So pip install Django. Let me clear it and we'll create our project. So Django dash admin start project and we'll call it as SRC. Okay, we'll navigate inside SRC and create our first app. So Django dash admin start app and I'll call it as blog because we are going to create blog application by using the knowledge of this series so that's why this and we'll minimize this so first thing if you remember we have to go inside src src that means project folder in the settings first of all we need to configure our installed apps so let's configure it over here we'll call it as blog save this in this video we'll not create any urls but we'll go to blog and we'll directly start by creating our model as i said in the video that uh, models are nothing but classes python classes so here i'll say first one is blog class blog and in this one we have to receive or inherit models dot model so this is the syntax class whatever the model name let's say if it was blog post then it would have been in this particular syntax and it will inherit models dot model and for any blog it always has a title right so title is always string so in django strings are represented by character field and in order to create that we have to say models dot care field or char field whatever you like in this we can give few parameters where we can say max length so max underscore length is equal to whatever you want to give let's say that i don't want title to be anything more than 120 character so this is how we can limit it let's save this and always remember whenever we are creating any model we don't create id field separately in django because any model that we create in django has already id field inbuilt into it and it will automatically increment and do everything uh, like primary key in the database table so that's why we don't create any id field and we have created our first attribute or first column of the table called as title now over here let's say that we have two fields one is called as created at and one is updated at so one will store the when the blog was when the blog post was created another will store time of date time of when the blog post is last updated so we'll create that over here i'll quickly show you why i am doing this so just bear with me it is created at uh, models dot date time field you can separately have date field, you can have duration field, but we are going to use date time field over here. And in this one, we are going to pass auto now add. Okay, this will be true. So this means whenever any particular record is created in this table or in this model, the date time will be stored of that particular time. 
and date now we are going to create updated at uh, let's call it as created at okay and this will be model start again date time field in this one we are going to say auto now as true so this means every time this blog one record is updated the updated time will be stored in this particular field and now every blog has comments right and each comment is linked to a particular blog and every blog will have multiple comments so let's try to create that i'll say class comment this will also take in model dot model and we'll say comment text okay whatever the comment is stored that text we want to store so for that models dot text area or text field we are going to use so over here in the title we have used chair car field or character field and in this comment we are using text field because comment can be huge lengthy so that's why we are using text field it is similar to text area in the input of html and this is similar to uh, normal uh, text input and in the comment also we can have created at and updated at right because every comment will be created sometime and let's say that user updates the comment because of some spelling mistake or some something at that time updated at will be stored but if you see these two quotes are repeated like both the lines so how can we fix that or how can we dry it out basically do not repeat yourself so in order to do that we can create a model i'll say class let's call it as create update model we'll call it as this it will take in models dot model and will copy this one from here and paste it okay so this will do that but i'll add something over here class meta okay this is like kind of some settings to that particular table or to that particular model over here we are going to say abstract as true this means in django whenever migration is run it won't create a table called create updated model why because we have added this setting called as abstract true and what we'll do is in the post model right we'll inherit it so instead of model start model we are going to use created updated model and we will remove remove these two fields because whenever django runs the migration what it will check is in post we are inheriting created updated model or create update model and it has these two fields and it has abstract true so it won't create this one separately but it will take these two fields it will put it over here and create the model for post now same will do for comments also so in comments also we'll paste it over here create update model and we'll remove these two i'm showing you this because this helps in drying out that means uh, we are not repeating our code and uh, this also uses django's inbuilt uh, like model functionality where abstract is true and in interviews many of the interviewers ask what is abstract in models in django so this you can explain it easily now comment should belong to a particular post right so that is relationship in django or relationship into database tables so for that we are going to say post over here in the comments uh, comment uh, model and in post we are going to say models dot foreign key f o r e i g n k e y in this one the first parameter that we have to give is post or uh, means like model name so model name over here is post this line means that every comment belongs to a particular post and this has few parameters okay so now let's say that you have commented on my post but i decide to delete my post what should happen to that comment should it be deleted should that comment be set to as null for that particular post i want to delete it okay so uh, we will say is on underscore delete models dot cascade so it is all caps cascade whenever this one post is deleted of that particular comment that comment will also be deleted so that means that is why we are using models dot cascade and let's say that you wanted to set null so you will use is set null over here that means this comment won't belong to any particular post and there is one more thing called as do nothing which will like ignore it so for now we'll set it to delete actually cascade and 
that is it now let's complete our post model a uh, post can have slug field also where uh, user will enter short form of that particular uh, post so we'll use slug field for that also model dot care field i'm going to use and in this one i'm going to say max length again of 120 and you know what in this one we can add one more parameter or one more property over here called as unique unique as true that means every title will be unique and let's enter the same thing for slug also so that slug will be also unique true uh, i fixed the slug spelling also now there will be of course the content of the blog so let's say content and content will be text field because it will be huge then every blog will have some status so we'll call it a status and this can be again care field but status can be limited right where status will be draft, published and archive. So we can give choices to this character field also. So let's create our choices first. So we'll call it a status, status, choices. Choices will be also tuple and we'll say over here is draft and we'll use draft over here also. Let me copy paste it twice. We'll use publish and finally we'll use archive. Okay, so these are our status choices. And in order to give, give it to this status, field of this particular model will do is first of all let's give it a default value so default value will be equal to draft and choices over here will be equal to status choices so that's it this is how you are able to limit the any particular fields value now every post will have image and author right so let's create our image field or we'll call it as hero image so hero image and this will be models dot image field by default django comes built in with image field in this one we are going to say upload to so upload underscore to and we'll call it as post okay so we need to of course configure our media url in this project also and from media url it will go to post folder and by default we can give this a value so let's call it as post slash sample dot jpg this we will create it later now for blog there will be owner right so blog will have owner and this will be models dot again foreign key field so foreign key now here owner will be some user and that user should be a logged in user right and as i said earlier in the video that django already comes built in with user model so let's import that so that will come from from django dot contrib dot models or auth actually auth dot models import user so from django dot contrib dot auth dot models import user and then we are going to use this user over here and what should happen on delete on delete let's do is models dot cascade so i want to delete all the users information all the users blog post that was created by that particular user when he deletes his account so that is how we are able to complete our post model now let's complete our comment model for every comment will be done by some user so for that also we need owner so we'll copy it and paste it over here now let's say that we have feature where the owner of the blog or owner of the post approves the comment and only if the comment is approved then only it is visible to the user so we'll create something for that we'll call it as is comment approved so models dot boolean field and by default we'll give it as false value okay and that's it we are able to complete our comment model also let's save this now our models is complete